Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lagodobo shina na mahande bo sare abahala yaba. Thank you, Father, for this awesome moment. We give you the glory, the praise, the adoration. Thank you for the prophetic season we are in right now. Thank you for what you are going to do on the earth. Thank you because the destiny of the earth will be addressed in this sermon today. I give you all the glory, all the honor, all adoration. In Jesus' precious name I pray. And everybody said a big amen. Amen. I'm reading from the book of 2 Kings chapter 7 from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus seeth the Lord. Tomorrow by this time, a measure of fine flour will sell for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Somebody shout Amen. Then the captain in whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said <laughs> if the Lord should make windows in heaven could this thing be? But Elisha said you shall see it with your own eyes but you shall not eat of it. Now four men who were lepers were at the entrance of the city gate. And they said to one another, Why do we sit here until we die? If we say we enter the city, then the famine is in the city. And if we shall die there, and if we sit here also, we can also die. So now, come. Let us enter into the army of the Samarians. If they spare us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. After all, something will kill someone. So they arose in the midnight and went into the Syrian camp. But when they came to the edge of the camp, no man was there. For the Lord has made the Syrian army hear a noise of chariot and horses. The noise of a great army. They had said to one another, the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptian kings to come upon us. So the Syrians arose and fled in the night and left their tent, horses, donkeys, even the camp as it was. And fled for their lives. Wow. Verse 10. So they came. And called to the gatekeepers of the city. They told them. We came to the camp of the Syrians. And behold. There was neither sight nor sound of any man there. Only the horses. And the donkeys. Tied. And the tents were as they were. Ladies and gentlemen, I came with a prophetic word from the Lord this morning. On the 27th day of May, after praying in the Holy Ghost for a long time, I slept early in the morning and I had a dream. I know when I have revelations and I, when I have mere dreams. Anytime I pray for a long time in the spirit and sleep, whatever I dream about, I take them very serious. So in, the, in that dream, I saw the gates of churches opened. And I saw children, elderly ones. In fact, I saw my dear wife, and so many of the women leaders in the church tidying up the whole church compound. 
you know, preparing for something huge to happen. Children were so excited. They were running through the chairs of the church. I saw the joy in their eyes, in their hearts. They have missed the presence of the church for a long time. People were happy. Some were removing the cobwebs. All of a sudden, I woke up. When I woke up, I didn't need anyone to tell me that the siege is over. Listen, gentlemen, I'm preaching on the topic this morning that says the siege is over. Help me tell your neighbor the siege is over. Tell him the captivity has ended in the precious name of Jesus. In 2 Kings chapter 6, before we get to chapter 7, we are just read. The Bible said there was a great siege in the land. It was a terrible siege. Being harder, the king of Syria has besieged Samaria. The Bible said no man went out, no man came in. You know what it means in a current day language? It is called a lockdown. No man went out. He said the king came with the host of the army. The same way you see the police and the armed forces on the road. Trying to enforce the lockdown. Making sure that people stayed and obeyed the rules of the government. What happened at that time is that the Syrian army came and they besieged Samaria. They didn't beat anybody. They didn't flog anybody. But they had one assignment. To make sure that no one went out. And no one came in. Everyone stayed indoor. As a result of this. There was famine in the land. The Bible said the famine was so much. How did the Bible describe the famine? It was so much. That an axe head. The head of an axe. Was being sold. For 80 pieces of silver. You may not understand what it meant. Until you, you realize. Uh, that Joseph. Joseph the son of Jacob. Was sold. For only 20 pieces. See, 20 pieces of silver. You may not understand the extent of the famine. Until you also realize. That Jesus Christ the son of God. Was sold. For only 30 pieces of silver. But here is the head of an axe. Being sold for 80. So Jesus. Joseph put together the head of an ass was sold far, far more. So the famine was terrible. Let me also describe this. The famine was so terrible that the Bible said two women had an agreement. What was the contract agreement? You will bring your baby today. We will kill your baby and prepare some good pepper soup. We will eat. Tomorrow, I'm going to bring my own. The two women conspired. The hunger was so much. It was the survival of the fittest. That women. Bible spoke about so much the way a, a woman cares for a baby. But not in the midst of this kind of famine. It was too much. You know, somebody called me. At the beginning of the lockdown. He said that this lockdown is too much. Oh. People are doing all manner of things. I answered, I said, when there was lockdown in the Bible, women even boiled and killed their children. She said to me, Daddy, God forbid, let it not be our portion. I said, it's not going to be, it's not going to come up to that point. But that shows you the, if, the impact of a lockdown. That shows you the impact of laying siege upon people's life people's health, people's economy, people's everything. So the Bible says, the first woman brought her baby and she was, the baby was killed, boiled, and they ate. They were so hungry that they could eat a whole human being in one day. Because the Bible said the next day, this lady said, I oh, yeah, bring your own child, the way we agreed. <laughs> but that one was matter. She has gone to hide her baby. So trouble started. 
I believe the fourth deity. In the midst of their fight, the king of Israel was passing. I want you to understand the extent, the impact of this hunger. This woman just committed murder because even if you kill your own child, murder is murder. But because it was in a state of emergency, laws were suspended. Abnormality became normal. One adage in my place said, when abnormality stays long, it becomes normal. That this woman went by herself to report herself to the king. And reported the matter, king will kill my child. And the king couldn't even order for her arrest. That's a problem. The king could not order for her arrest. You know what the king told her? The king told her, if the Lord, even me, the king, I need help now. You know, this, in this midst of lockdown, we saw people who originally had some measure of financial, you know, strength. After the first one week, second week, third week, the impact begins to tell on them. Why? Because family members, friends, church members, club members, townspeople, village people, everyone was calling them. I don't know whether you're hearing me right now. It's like your economy is going down because this lockdown has stayed too long. In the name of Jesus, I decree your money will not go down. In the precious name of Jesus, there is a miracle coming your way. Anytime from now, you will see a divine visitation that will shoot your resources up again. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm just trying to lay this foundation because I will begin to prophesy shortly. Lagado shana mahande legede. The king said to her, if the Lord cannot help you, listen gentlemen, no wonder David said in Psalm 121, verse 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. My help cometh. Some of you have discovered that there's no help coming anywhere from the government headquarters. Help coming anywhere from anywhere until your help comes from the Lord. I will fix my eyes upon the Lord. For the Lord himself is my shepherd and I shall not want. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. The king said to her, for the first time the king said the truth in her mouth. And what was the truth? If the Lord cannot help you, nobody will help you. If you are hearing me today, you'll be running from pillar to post. You've been looking for help where you think there are no help, sir. You've been trying. I want you to remove your eyes from men and put your eyes in Jesus. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Glory be to the Lamb of God. You know, shortly the king did something. Then he said, I need to go and talk to Elijah. Otherwise, I'm going to bring this head down. That's what Elijah didn't cause any famine. Elisha didn't cause any famine. But why are they looking for Elisha to kill? That's what has happened today. Everybody's blaming pastors and blaming men of God. As if pastors are the ones that control the economies of nation. But because pastors are fathers, pastors are fathers, and God has given us spiritual authority to be able to declare end of sieges. So the king sent for Elisha. And Elisha saw the men that the king sent. Then in chapter 7 verse 1, something happened. A strong prophetic anointing came upon the man of God. And he declared the end of the siege. He said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus hear the Lord. Tomorrow by this time, a measure of flour will be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. They were selling the head of an axe for 80 pieces of silver. It's like somebody saying, what was costing you a million? It's about to cost you 1,000 naira. This is too much. How do you explain that? In the name of Jesus, the man of God declared it by this time tomorrow. I remember right from this altar. In February 2017, when the country was still going through recession, I came in this altar and I told the church that we would declare the end of recession even before the 
government will know it. The church is faster. The church has spiritual information even before the economies of this world, even before the government of this world, even before the finance people of this world. I have come in the name of the Lord to announce to everyone who is going to listen, who is watching this broadcast right now, or someone who is going to hear me tomorrow or later today or any time in the future. Hear the word of the Lord by that revelation I had on the 27th of May and by the authority of God in these scriptures. I have come to announce that the end of lockdown is in sight in the name of Jesus. The siege is over. The siege on your marriage is over. The siege on your career is over. The siege on your business is over. The siege on your ministry is over. The siege over your finance. The siege over your relationship. Everything that the enemy has laid siege upon in the name of Jesus. I declare today that the siege is over forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to the Lamb of God. Yes. We may not have the army, but we have the host of heaven with us. Uh. We have the word of God with us. Uh. The man of God said, hear the word of the Lord. I have come to ask you to hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is the only difference between your current season and your next season. The word of God is the only difference between what you are going through and when you are going to be out of it. It, you don't need time to heal the womb. Let God heal the wound right now. Let the word of God become the game changer in your life. Let the word of God end one bad season and open a new season. Let the word of God end one ugly experience and open a new chapter. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm. The word of God carries the voice and the fire of God for performance. The word of God is a game changer. Ha, ya, la, la, ba, ya, ba. He said, Thus said the Lord, what nobody could buy for one million will be sold for two thousand naira. Who will believe that? No wonder the man that stayed with the king said, No, 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 no. I have seen miracle before, but not this time. No, no, no. I have seen provision before, but not this type. He said, Even if God will open the windows of heaven, it's not going to happen. And Elijah, Elijah said to him, ah, for arguing prophetic word, for arguing what God has said, for arguing the voice of God. Never you argue the voice of God. Never you argue what God has said. I am anointed to declare the end of this lockdown in this season. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. I am anointed for what I'm doing. Kalabasai am handebolo jadaba. Lekatu sapari and the lekato ya. I am anointed. Masaka basoto ya baligada. I am anointed to declare and to declare that the siege on your finances is over in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, mashika bara. Give him glory. Give him glory. Don't argue. Zachariah argued and became a dumb man. You know, Elisha said to him, God is going to permit you to see this prosperity, but you are not going to eat it. What is the extent of seeing what you will not eat? I decree whatever your eyes see, your hands will touch it, your mouth will eat it. In the name of Jesus, your prayers shall be answered and you shall be a blessing. You will see your children grow and you will enjoy their fulfillment. Nothing will die in your hand. Nothing, nothing will dry up in your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, look at what God did. God decided to use unlikely sources. To bring this solution. God have to take all the glory. Right now. The best human economies. Have failed us. Right now. Doctors are struggling for their own life. All eyes are upon the ancient of the day. So that only him will take all the glory. That's why I love some leaders of nations. Who understood clearly the role of God. When you interview them they will tell you. Even though we are trying to do our best. Uh, but this pandemic is only the Lord. Uh, that is going to end it. Uh, if the Lord does not help us. Uh, who then will help us? The Bible said that we are four lepers. 
This is a God that can use anybody, anything, whatever he wants to do. God can use anyone to get anything to you. God can use the king. God can use anybody. There are some people hearing me this week, this week. In the name of Jesus, you will receive blessing from places you never imagined. That things will come to you from. Unlikely people are going to bless you. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, you... you you are going to live in houses you never built. You will drive cars you never bought. In the precious name of Jesus. Some of you, you will see the kind of blessing that you have never seen in your life. Even in the midst of this pandemic. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is a great season. So God used four lepers. And these four lepers, they, they, they made a strong decision. They said, in our city, there is famine. So if we go there, we die. And if we stay here, we can also die. So we have only one option. Let us go to the camp of the Syrians. Two things will likely happen. They may show us mercy and give us some food to leave. But if they don't want, even if they kill us, then something must surely kill a man. At home we die, here we die, there we die. So let us go and die there. Ladies and gentlemen, going backward is no solution. I used to hear some believers say that if God didn't do it, I'm going to backslide. Go, I have never seen a prosperous backslider in my life. If you leave Jesus, you suffer. You have only one option to move forward. Move forward. When they got to the Red Sea, here was mountain. Here was mountain. Behind them was the army coming after them and then they didn't know what to do in front of them was the mighty red sea and when they cried unto god god told moses tell them to move forward where is forward inside of the red sea that was forward and the bible says as soon as their leg entered there god parted the sea you need to take that step my car some of you are stranded because you have refused to take that step forward in the name of jesus the anointing that will cause you to take that step forward. Let that anointing come upon you right now. In the precious name of Jesus, I kill your fear. In the name of Jesus, I kill the fear. What you are afraid of is also afraid of you. I kill the fear today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. So these four lepers took decision. The Bible says as soon as they took the first step into the camp of the Syrians, God caused a mighty noise that all the armies of the Syria, they had a volcanic noise and they all left the camp. All of the mighty army ran away. The four lepers got there. Are we dreaming? Is it for real? <laughs> Some of you, what God will do for you will appear like a dream. What is going on? They turn here, bags of rice. Turn here, chariots. Turn here, yams. Turn here, gold. Turn here, money, silver, gold. They began to pack. They began to pack. Bible said they ate. When they have eaten and they were packing, one of them said to them, we are not doing fine. Today is a day of good news. Let's go to the land and let's announce to the people that the Lord God has brought a mighty victory. Ladies and gentlemen, every child of God in this season, God is going to open special doors for his people. But I want to beg you in the name of the Lord, when God gives you supernatural miracle, cheer with your brethren. It's not a time to hold the blessing. Hey! They never knew it's a miracle. A miracle has happened. What nobody thought would enter your hand is about to enter your hand. In the precious name of Jesus. The Bible said, they began to pack. They began to pack. They began to pack. The blessing were so much. But in the midst of the rushing, that man that stood at the gate, they crushed him and he died, fulfilling the word of the Lord. The Bible said that same day, there was so much of plenty in the land that nobody could even buy anything from anybody. According to the word of the servant of the Lord, you know what God said to me? Initially, I've been telling people the economy will recover gradually. But God said to me, it's not going to be a gradual recovery. It's going to recover with the speed of the supernatural. Men are going to bounce back. People are going to bounce back quickly. God is going to be in a hurry. 
to bless men and women. Things are going to flow again. Prosperity is coming to the land again. Blessing is coming again. There will be abundance of resources in the land again. Because it is not by power. It is not by might. It is by the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I stand by this revelation to declare that the siege is over. The lockdown is over. COVID is past past his bag. He has run out of the edge. We declare in the name of Jesus, the land is free. The land is cleansed. The land is purged. In the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet, everybody. Let's worship in the spirit. Glory. The lockdown is over. In the name of Jesus. The siege is over. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The siege over your marriage is over. I command peace is coming. Prosperity is coming. The siege over your career is over. Help me tell five persons. The siege is over. 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 Post in tongues and pray in the Holy Ghost. The siege is over. It is by the anointing. I am not waiting for the government. I come from the Lord. The Bible said the government shall be upon his shoulder. We legislate for God on the earth. We legislate for God on the earth. Right now, in the eyes of the Spirit. Right now, in the eyes of the Spirit. With the mantle and the grace of my calling. I decree in the name of Jesus. The siege is over. The cast is over. The sickness is over. The attack is over. The attack on your finance is over forever. In the name of Jesus. It is over. Worship him. Worship him. Hey. I declare by the grace of God upon my life. I declare by the mountain of my calling. In the name of Jesus. The siege is over. The siege is over. The lockdown is over. Your business is released. Your skill is released. Your talent is released. Your ministry is released. Your anointing is released. Favor is released. Hunger is out of your life. The siege is over. It is not going to be a gradual recovery. It's going to recover in a hurry. It's going to recover in a hurry. You will recover the money. You will recover the happiness. You will recover your health. In the name of Jesus, God is going to use unlikely vessels to release your blessing. In the name of Jesus, I decree in this season, prosperity is coming to you. In this season, money is coming to you. In the name of Jesus, I announce it is a new day. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Just worship him, worship him, worship him.